If you want to see the biggest trade of my trading career, head to the 9 minute and 33 second mark. Otherwise, on with the video. You let, you the, let the whole team down. So it has come to my attention that the amount of money that I said that I would put in for day zero and like in general for the challenge didn't add up to 100. And thank you to the person who uh, pointed it out to me. And this is why I say that leaving a comment helps you and me. It helps me realize if there's anything that I've done wrong. And if you have a question, then I can help you. And I would gladly help you as I've stated before. So please leave a comment if you have any questions, concerns. And yeah. So today is day four of Journey of a Content Creator. And I have done some rather... Uh, I don't know how to exactly put it. I've made some risky plays. Some big plays we'll call it. Or not, they're not risky. We're going to call them big big plays so as you can see here uh i have 90 dollars in my account if you watch the previous uh day you will see that i had around 800 something and at one point i had a thousand dollars and the reason that i had a thousand is because i was selling positions in certain companies and that is how we got to the a thousand i'm not I, the way that i want this challenge to go as i said make two to three thousand but that two to three thousand would result in me growing the account back to eleven thousand dollars as you can see, we were flying high, flying high at 11,000. Then we, the market corrected and we are here at $8,000. So yeah, we're going to get into it for today. So as you can see here, this was the first place that I had bought for uh, the challenge. As you can see on April 13th, $26 into the S&P. And it's still treating us nice. We still have a dividend pending for April 30th. And as you can see, MP materials, which I would have talked about in the previous video, our limit buy went through for the 15th, and I had decided that I would buy some more. So today for the 16th, as you can see, uh, I think I bought two more shares. Yeah, two more shares of MP. This is going to be a long hold because this is really and truly, as I stated in the last video, we are going to be looking for Biden's infrastructure plan to really shoot this stock up. I don't know exactly how much, but this is the i don't know this is a two year hold stock and i'm just going to be buying the dip and i don't exactly have an exit price but i know that it is going to be a higher price than where we're at currently so i'm just going to be buying the dip and we're going to be riding it up to wherever it's gonna uh take us here we have bio nano genomics and as you can see it is down significantly as you can see my average cost is eight dollars and 23 cents but i have no fear because and i had wanted to get this video out earlier but you know we'll still work with it because today is the last day of this event the reason why i have no fear in this company is because today bngo well i guess today today was really the 13th but you know it's the 16th as of recording this bngo announced a number of presentations a record number of presentations at the annual clinical genetics meeting and I left a link in the description to all my research so you all can read along. And here, the meeting features a total of 16 presentations by Sapphire, which is BioNanoG uh main product, you could call it. Sapphire customers and BioNano scientists, almost three times the number presented last year, and nearly all based on work done in the United States. So yeah, I want to do a lot, of, a lot more research into this company because I want to really and truly understand what it is about i know as i've stated in previous videos that it deals with genome mapping and it is faster than their competitions like pacific biosciences but i'm trying to really grasp the scientific side more so than the financial side so i know whether or not this company is uh you know so i can truly understand as a person not as not necessarily as an investor here we have Kubian, another stock that I've talked about. And why I'm talking about Kubian is because they hired, but they hired Leon Zimmel as chief product officer. And the reason why I believe that this is big is as if you're reading along, you'll see, and I'll put it on screen. Leon Zimmel led the development of one of the first demand side platforms. For those who haven't been following the channel, Kubian is a, a uh, advertising marketing sort of deal. They deal with demand side and supply side. It's a whole lot of, uh, uh, not exactly complications, but it's a whole lot to describe. So I'm not going to go into full detail. Uh, I'll leave my video and I'll leave Wall Street's video because he did a great video on this that I, I encourage you to watch. 
Uh, the next stock we'll be talking about is Sundial Cannabis. So we're going to head over to Sundial. And I was honestly considering selling. And I also want to decrease my average cost. Because as you can see, it's a dollar. I have a limit sell in place. But I'm that's uh, a long ways off really and truly. So the reason why I want to talk about Sundial Growers is that uh, in America, I believe it's Virginia. Yeah, in Virginia and in of course, Mexico, Mexico is in a part of America, but Virginia and Mexico have been slowly easing uh, the restrictions around cannabis. Uh, I'm not sure if I can necessarily say that on YouTube because I don't want to get demonetized. But yeah, cannabis, they've been slowly uh, restricting the stigma around it. They, they, you can, I believe it's, you can, ha you can have it recreationally, long story short. And some of the reasons why I believe in this company is that the two people that they have on their on their directors is Andrew Stroder and Brian Lundquist. I can't exactly pronounce his name, but overall, the company has a lot a track record of dealing with people from Molson Coors, um, General Mills, and Kellogg. So they would know what they're doing because Sundial Cannabis, uh, what is it, CPG Customer Package Goods, yeah. They're dealing with that and, you know, Kellogg's, Molson, uh, and the other one, General Mills, yeah. They all deal with that sort of industry. It's just these two people, and I'm going to do a lot more research into the others, but those two deal with, uh, you know, uh, CPG, customer package goods. So they'll, they'll be knowledgeable in this sector. And another reason why I'm bullish on Sundown is that they recently cleared all their debt. Really and truly, I believe this is like a five-year hold. And it's going to be a long hold because it's it's very volatile, as you can see. And I personally don't necessarily mind because it's going to be, you know, you buy in low and then you sell high. Easy, simple, simple investing. So this is going to be a long term hold. And I'll update you guys on this whenever I see any big movement. Another company that I want to talk about is Arrow. Uh, and the reason why I want to dead inside, you know, I reference him a lot. If you've been watching, I'll leave a link to his video uh, within my research so you all can look at it. He brought this to my, I say brought this to my attention as if he actually knows me. He doesn't know me, but I was watching his video and it, it came to my attention about Arrow. The reason why I'm going to, well, I'm not invested in Arrow yet. As you can see, I don't have a position in it, but I'm definitely looking at it considering because electric vehicles really are the future and Arrow has a thing called the EVV which is the electrical vaccine vehicle and I could see the Red Cross using this device I could see like for example in Texas when they had the blackout that if the EVV vaccine uh, the EVV vehicle vaccine vehicle not only is I could see it not only just being for vaccines I could see it as a disaster relief sort of vehicle but obviously they're marketing it as a vaccine vehicle because we're in uh, pandemic and like as i said the red cross could use it maybe potentially uh you could see some army use uh in other countries things like that but yeah I, I think you all can see really and truly what i mean with this vehicle that it has a lot of potential and versatility the other thing that i want to talk about is the club car which i think is the club car 411 i could be wrong about that i don't have the number uh with me right now but if you, I left an interview for you all to listen to, and I feel as though this would be a useful uh, vehicle for like college campuses. You know, since not everybody can be in the uh, dining room now, you would have the car go out and pick up all the food and distribute it to people. And the CEO has said this is not meant to be a replacement for your traditional food truck where, you know, you'd go out and they'd cook and then you'd get it. It's more to be a competitor with like Uber and Lyft. Because for those that don't know, before the pandemic, when Uber and Lyft only made up a small percentage of restaurant profits, it was perfectly fine to use them. But now that, uh, you know, a lot of more people are relying on these food delivery apps, it's uh, cutting into the restaurant's bottom line. Because those companies, Uber, Uber Eats, not Uber, just Uber, Uber Eats, Grubhub, I don't know why it said Lyft. But yeah, those companies are cutting into the bottom line of the restaurants when they are used. So the last stock for today is going to be Inovio, and this is the biggest play of my investment career, and I say that because I have invested 
a lot of money into an OVO. And this is only recently. This isn't like a long term something. Like I will I've hold, I've been into it long, but it's just that I put the most of money, the most amount of money that I have, as you can see, in the past 30 days. I'll let you guys calculate that so I don't accidentally uh, spew off a, a wrong number. So, yeah, there you go. And the reason that I bought an OVO at the time of recording this, uh, today's the 16th, so the 15th, it was announced that Inovio's vaccine was effective against all the COVID variants. And, you know, I figured... Because I was originally thinking of selling this. As you can see, Anovio has just been... It hasn't been doing too great. In the past year, yeah, but overall, really and truly, it hasn't been doing great. And, of course, you would think that this would cause a run-up. And it hasn't caused a run-up yet. Uh, there are some talks on the Anovio Reddit that there is a potential short squeeze incoming. I don't quite uh, get the the reasoning for it. But if there's a short squeeze incoming fantastic if there isn't well i didn't really expect one to begin with and if the vaccine really does come out to be uh effective against all the variants then obviously it's going to be fantastic we'll probably see the share price run up uh the average cost originally my average cost when i held like 30 something shares 20 something shares was 21 dollars but as you can see uh we've managed to get it down to 12.39 and we're just going to be holding, I, as I stated in my research, this is most likely going to pop June, July, August, sometime around there. Because I believe that is when they will be starting uh, phase three testing. I believe they're currently on phase two. As I stated in my research last year, the government, they've received a lot of grants. Uh, I'll put those, uh, what do you call it? The articles on screen so that you all can see. And... Really and truly, the long and short of it is, if this stock blows up, if like if it returns to its all-time highs of $33, then the challenge is pretty much done. And if it does, I want everybody to know this is not normal. This is not a, a standard happening in the stock market. I wouldn't necessarily call it luck, but it's more right place, right time with the right knowledge. If it does blow up, the challenge is over. If it doesn't, then we still have to work. As you can see, our account is bleeding out. But hopefully, with what I have invested in, BNGO, Kubian, Zumatica, all of the Sundial. Sundial is a not exactly risky, but it's a fickle one. If these stocks turn out to be winners, then the challenge is over. If it doesn't, we still have work to do. Regardless, I'm still going to be working and yeah that's pretty much it for this episode if you enjoyed this video please comment so that i so anything can be brought to my attention please like and subscribe if you enjoyed and i will see you in the next day of journey of a content creator